Now one way to adjust for risk is to incorporate it into the valuation model using the security market line. Now here's a visual representation of this equation here. And this equation of course is the return of a stock equals the return of a risk-free rate plus the risk to uh, leave the bond market, go to the stock market, and of course minus risk-free risk -free rate times an individual uh, risk m uh, measurement referred to as beta. Now let's look at each part of the, the model. First of all, let's take a look at the risk-free rate. Here's the risk-free rate right here. And currently uh, the risk-free rate is very low, and generally the risk-free rate is usually treasury bills, which are government uh, loans, federal government loans that don't mature within the year, but that doesn't mean that you can't use something else. Some I have seen some analysts use treasury notes, for instance. If they're going to look at a timeline of five years here, they may use a five-year treasury note for the risk-free rate. However, most use the uh, treasury bill. Uh, and in addition, it's referred to as the risk-free rate because the federal government has never defaulted on a loan. So what it's saying, it's right up against this line here saying you have to get at least that. That's the beginning of it. The next one is the risk to enter the market minus the risk-free rate, which is actually this black line right here. Uh, and you see it has a slope to it. Now since 19, historically 1950, it's been about 11 percent the uh, risk to, uh, the, to enter the market. Now you can easily go to Google and Google it up and find uh, what that rate is, but a lot of industry, uh, experts will use closer to 11 percent. I could spend a lot of time on uh, how most calculate this. They usually use either a three to five year timeline. They look at the uh, a return of maybe the S&P 500 and maybe here a return of a, a basket of government bonds. And They kind of take a look at the difference of the return over three to five years divided by the three to five points and then they get an arithmetic average sometimes. That's, that's one way of by doing it. Now if we stop and look at it, if the risk to enter the market has increased or this number goes up, you can take a look at the slope. The slope will also increase and that's what this red line is showing. It's showing that uh, there's a higher risk or more pes uh, pessimism in entering the stock market. So it's going to cause a higher slope here. In addition, one thing I didn't mention on the risk-free rate, if the risk-free rate increases that red line, you can see the, uh, the blue and the black line here, it goes up here. And it stays the same slope because the slope's only determined by this part of the line here. So either an increase in the risk-free rate or uh, increase in the slope of the uh, risk of the market minus risk-free rate will cause uh, the RS to have to increase with it as well. Now the last number, uh, the last is referred to as beta. Now beta is here at the bottom. Now you can take a look in uh, beta of 1 and generally what a beta of 1 means it's going to be whatever index you use. For instance a lot of analysts will use the S&P 500. So what it says here S&P 500 it says I'm using a slope against the S&P 500. If my company has a slope of 1 or a beta of 1 it tells me if my company have increased by 10 percent over a period of time so is the S&P. So it's kind of a mirror of the S&P if you will. Now a beta of 2 would say if the S&P increased by 10 percent, my stock has increased by 20 percent twice. So you can see it's more risky because the downside is also uh, potential. Uh, at a beta of 2, if the stock market goes down by 10 percent, I decline by 20 percent. So it shows me as betas get greater than 1, it's more risky than the S&P 500 if that's my index. Now if we take a look at anything less than uh, 1 would be less risky. So if I have a beta of 0.5, if the S&P goes up by 10 percent, my stock only goes up by 5%. And in essence, I only lose 5%, and the S&P goes down by 10%. So it's a less risky uh, when you have a beta of less than 1. Now, I will uh, apply uh, a video for this week if you want to take a look at uh, how I calculate betas a specific way. However, if you don't want to, uh, I recommend Yahoo Finance and look up your company, put your company's ticker in, and then go to over the left there's something called Key Statistics. Uh, key stats. And on key stats, you're going to find uh, the beta, and I believe they use the Merrill Lynch's beta. Um, so you can also use that one. So I hope that uh, helps a little bit with how we adjust for risk using the valuation models like the dividend cash flow model.